we are standing with our European partners to help stabilize markets and Norway is now the main provider of gas to Europe. We have been able to increase our export of gas to Europe, which is a major contribution by the companies operating off the continental shelf. Our argument has been that price caps would not resolve the fundamental issue, which is that there is a shortage of gas. And I, I, I'm, I've, I've been cautious, you know, and, and to, to say to my European partners that be careful not to make market interventions that may, res may result in the opposite, that there will be not more but less gas coming to Europe. Uh, so so I, I think there is caution here and we have been, you know, um, skepti skepti have skepticism to, to, the, to the price cap uh, approach. Well, it's not really a conflict, you know. I, I, as I said, Norway is um, a stable, reliable provider of gas. We've been able to increase that um, uh, delivery by 8 to 10 percent, which is a significant amount, uh, helping European countries to fill up their, their, their storage. And we too are served by more stable uh, gas markets. You know, the high prices of gas in Europe drive up electricity prices in my country because the two prices are linked. Um, and um, uh, it is, uh, has never been in Norway's interest to have this instability. Uh, but it is, of course, caused by the fact that Russian gas is not coming to Europe. It's a part of, 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 uh, of uh, Putin's uh, decisions. So that's why we work with our European partners to see how we can um, help stabilize the markets. And in the longer run, the answer has to be a very dedicated push for renewables, for, uh, for wind, sun, hydrogen, and the like that will be the energy system of tomorrow. I mean, the answer is that Norway is a long mainstay partner of the United Nations different agencies and also in this field of the humanitarian relief. And we have been stepping up our contributions uh, uh, in the food uh, uh, security domain. We have also been supporting support um, measures for small-scale farmers. But, you know, all of this is cannot compensate for the drama that uh, David Swisley is, is, uh, is underlining. Where is it coming from? You know, when fertilizer is lacking and prices are driven up, that is uh, a momentous uh, challenge. And, you know, it comes back to the war. This is a war, you know, it can never be explained or legitimized by the consequences you see, you see beyond Ukraine. We just spoke about energy. Europe is in, in, a, in, a, in a challenging situation, the region around, but this food issue, I think, is critical. You know, we used to say that the number of people living with, with, with hunger as a challenge, it was gradually going down. Now it is going up. Uh, uh, and, and that is, of course, uh, the, 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 the most um, dramatic illustration. Uh, of, uh, of what this war is is doing.